Hi, I'm Paula Moore, the chiropractor, and I'm here to talk to you today about how to use a tennis ball for your lower back trouble. Okay? Now, I probably didn't invent this, but I feel as if I have because my patients absolutely love it and they tell me it's the best thing they've ever learned. So, I don't know how long it's been around, but I kind of found it one day uh, after I'd injured my own back and I haven't looked back since. It's one of the most popular exercises I give my clients and I use it to get rid of knots in the low back. It can be used all over the body, but it's particularly great for the low back and those hard to reach places. I've got my friend here, the spine, and I'm gonna show you where you're gonna be using this. Right. So, this is you facing the spine, looking from behind at the spine, and the tennis ball is to be used in your low back, between the crests of the pelvic bones and the lower margin of the ribs. So pretty much to either side of the green area, which is your lumbar spine. Those are the areas you're going to be looking for your muscular knots. So the tennis ball, shortly when you're lying on your back, you're going to be placing it along this area here, and along this area here. And in particular, there's a sweet spot right about in here where you get on a muscle called your quadratus lumborum, your QL. And on most people, I can find a trigger point or a muscular knot in there. Definitely people with low back pain. I've never found one yet that doesn't have these. And it's so effective because you can travel with a tennis ball so you're never stuck out. Um, in pain, not knowing what to do. So this is great for muscular spasms and getting rid of those knotted muscles. And as an aside, a knot in a muscle you can think of um, as a buildup of lactic acid where a muscle's been overworking. So athletes get it and people with back trouble get it where the muscles are overworking and the lactic acid builds up and forms a knot. And by applying pressure either with my thumb as a chiropractor or my elbow when I'm feeling particularly mean um, or a tennis ball. So you can apply pressure to your own trigger points and help melt them away. So these are the areas we're going to look for. So take a look at me lying on my back now. Okay, so just before you lie back, you've got your tennis ball on the opposite of the same side as the side you're going to apply it to. You're going to lie on your back, you're going to roll to the side, and you're going to have a little feel with your own fingers for any maybe um, tender points or any areas where it feels a bit knotted. You're going to move the tennis ball around until you find a particularly tender one, and it looks something like this. say ouch yeah okay I can find a tender point in there and remember those spots I showed you on the spine between the crest of the pelvis and where your ribs end in between there and really up close to the bony spine but not on the bones so you put the tennis ball in you roll your knees back sometimes I give them a bit of a wiggle and I look to see hmm, is that tender not quite take the knees away find the point, move the ball around until you find a tender one. Now I've got one there. Now for some people this is enough weight to get the tension onto the ball and feeling that tenderness. If you can't find a tender point, you can increase the weight on the tennis ball. Um, I tend to do this by taking my foot onto my opposite knee and tipping. Sometimes I even like to use my hands cupping them over my knee, tipping right onto the ball putting a little more weight onto that point. And now I've got a really tender one. I call it good pain. Something you feel like where you're really getting at the, the point and doing something about it. Now the key with these tender points is you need to stay on them until they completely fade. If you come off the ball before they've faded, you can actually switch these points on and they can start to really aggravate you. So you stay on, and I've got a good point there now, it's tender. If you get one and you start feeling the tenderness travel down your leg, it's okay. Just remember that that's a more chronic point. When they travel away from the site, 
they've been there longer. Stay on it until it completely fades. On average, that will take between 20 seconds and right up to two or three minutes for some really chronic ones. When the pain is completely dissipated, slowly roll off the tennis ball and move the tennis ball to another tender point. My goal with this exercise is to find two or three tender points each side. And remember, stay on them until they fade completely. To come off them, roll your knees away and go up onto all fours. Don't just sit up as, as I just did there, okay? So watch how I get up in the correct way now after finishing the tennis ball exercise. And by the way, do two or three points each side. And this can be done every single day. Again, this one's definitely best to be done after you've been up a couple of hours. My preference is to do it after a hot bath or after a little bit of exercise or at the end of the day. You're going to get a lot more out of it. So watch how I get up after I've been doing it. You'll be a little bit sore, okay? correct way to get up. Be careful not to push down too hard on the tennis ball. You can bruise the muscle. If you do bruise the muscle, arnica lotion is great and the, the bruising won't last anyway. It can be sore the next day, but remember this is not for you to be diagnosed or, or treating a condition. If there's anything you're really concerned about, you should be seeing your chiropractor or your GP. Okay, we'll see you at paulmorethechiropractor.com for other great posture tips. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.